Genuine Toyota brake pads are designed to meet Toyota engineering performance standards and, when installed correctly, help provide the safety and durability you've come to expect from Toyota products. These videos highlight best practices for installing genuine Toyota brake pads. Following these procedures should not take additional time and will help reduce the chance of a comeback. The five short videos are only one to two minutes in length. Each video covers an important best practice for brake pad installation. Be sure to review all repair manual procedures and any relevant technical service bulletins for the vehicle's brake system you're servicing. Now, let's get started. A proper inspection of the rotor is often ignored to save time. If the rotor is worn unevenly or is too thin, there is an increased chance of noise or vibration when applying the brakes, which probably means a comeback. When measuring the rotor, inspect the surfaces for discoloration and rust. Measure the disc for thickness and lateral runout. Use a micrometer to measure the disc's thickness. If it doesn't meet the specs in the repair manual, replace the disc. Lateral runout is the measurement of the disc surface angle in relation to the pad. This angle can be affected by uneven torque when tightening the wheel nuts or by dirt or rust between the hub and disc. Using a dial indicator, measure the runout. If you cannot bring the runout within specification, you will have to grind or replace the discs. If you need to turn the rotors, use an on-car brake lathe to keep the disc concentric to the hub. Don't forget, you're not done until you wash the rotor surface either with brake cleaner or mild soap and water to ensure it is clean and free of debris or shavings. No one wants a customer to return with a noise complaint after a brake job, so a thorough inspection can dramatically reduce the chance of a comeback. Begin by inspecting the caliper components for damage or excessive wear. Check the caliper assembly for leakage, damage, or non-operation. Look for scoring or rust on the piston and cracks or deterioration on the dust boots. Replace as needed. Inspect the pad support plates. They should have good rebound with no deformation, cracks, or wear. Remove and clean them to ensure smooth operation when the brakes are applied. Check and clean the pad wear clips. Or replace them if they're worn. The caliper pins on a floating caliper system enable the caliper to move back and forth to apply even pressure on both sides of the rotor. If one of the slide pins lock, it can cock the caliper causing uneven wear on the brake pad, so proper lubrication is critical. Carefully inspect the pins and pin boots for damage or excessive wear. If they are in good shape, clean them thoroughly and apply lithium grease to the pen. Use Toyota Lithium Soap Base Glycol Grease. Do not lubricate the tabs or pad brackets unless it is specified in a technical service bulletin. Brake shims are critical to absorbing vibrations to reduce noise, but they must match the pad and be properly installed. Each genuine Toyota brake pad kit contains matching shims, so you must use the provided shims. Do not reuse old shims. Using a mismatched shim can cause the brake pad to rub or drag on the rotor surface, causing squealing or grinding, improper pad wear, and rotor damage. 
When installing shims, only use the shim grease contained in the kit and follow instructions in the next video on shim grease to make sure you use the right amount in the right locations. Shim grease is supplied with each pad kit and is the only grease you should use when mounting the shims. However, using the proper amount in the correct locations is critical to minimize brake noise. Each pad shape and size has unique grease application points. On a single hole pad, for example, you apply grease on each side of the hole. The grease should be around 10 millimeters in diameter and 1 to 2 millimeters deep. That's about three quarters of the diameter of a dime, so don't overdo it. Always apply grease to the backing plate, not to the shim, and make sure you do not allow any grease to fill in the holes. The packing box for your brake pad kit shows where to install the shim grease based on the backing plate design. Install the shims by first hooking the bottom edge to the pad. Then carefully and firmly apply pressure to the shim while sliding it forward to clip the top clip in place. There you have it. A properly lubricated and installed shim plate ready for installation in the caliper.